Well, hey, everybody, Allison Webb is with me today. So we get to learn accounting. And then everybody hung up. No, we're not going to just talk about accounting. We're going to talk about fun things. Uh, and uh, Allison, thanks. Uh, we were just talking before the call about uh, I got to speak at your in-person conference at uh, Brian Carter's church, like it was the end of February of last year. So yes. it's right before we knew the world was going to fall apart. And uh, wow, good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like we're in such a better place than <laughs> even in that last 15 months, right? Yeah, well, we, this is our first week, our first full two weeks back in the office. And we had planned for today to be our first um, all staff meeting all together. And in God's providence, uh, last night, the CDC said no more masks if you're vaccinated and inside. So it was actually like a real meeting. So we're all kind of flying a little high here and uh, enjoying it. But uh, yeah, there's, there's, as I mentioned to you um, before the call, if you decide next time there's a pandemic, don't release your book the week the pandemic breaks the news because <laughs> It doesn't work. It didn't work for us. We, we launched the, the book on Succession next to the, the new updated expanded version. And then nobody wanted to listen to anything except Dr. Fauci. So we kind of are now relaunching. We're talking about several things. And I wanted to visit with you particularly today to hear like, okay, yeah, we, you think Succession, you think senior leader and you think probably retiring senior leader, but that's pretty short sighted. It's, you know, it could be younger leader that doesn't stay their whole career, but it's not just senior leader. It's, uh, it's back office. Like if my finance director left today and the guy with the religion and philosophy degree and, and Adrian, my wife with a biology degree, what in the world do we do to prepare a succession pipeline for, for particularly back office jobs that are highly skilled that you can't just hand off to the next person. Does that, does that make sense? Is that a oh, fair yeah. question? Yeah, nope. There's a number of things, right, that can do and that really do line up with those that are in your book. And, you know, a lot of the steps that you talk about, right, that first point is planning. <laughs> so is and so again, you think so much of the mission and vision transition and the leadership change how can that translate to the finance team, right? Because your CFO or finance director are probably seen as the connector, right? They're the ones that communicate the financial health of your church to your senior leadership, who's casting the vision and carrying out the mission. So if you lose that piece, what? how do you continue to, to operate and have that, that financial information and stability? I think that's a big thing is the stability that they provide. And, you know, again, as you mentioned, right? How many are then turning and looking around themselves going, do you know how to reconcile that bank statement? <laughs> do you know where we go to get that report? Um, and so I think a big thing is planning and how you yeah, can What should that. that plan look like? Like, you know, when I hired my first uh, finance director, my running buddy is it was CFO and an accountant of a very, very large company. And I asked him, you know, how much finance staff should I have in place? And is it, and the first thing he said to me was how much did they take? Cause like he's, no one hires a finance person until there's been a financial impropriety. <laughs> so yeah. like, but how do you prevent that kind of thing from happening and build a sustainable staff model? Should you have more than one person that's capable or uh, teach me? Yes. No. And you're right on there, right? So the three things, right, even from my days of being an auditor and a financial consultant, it is systems, processes, and people, right? And so you're picking up on the on the people aspect, right? How, what are the skill sets that they need to have? How many of them do I need to have uh, in order to take that function? But before you get, like, you have to take that people, but let's look at the systems that are in place, right? What tools do you have to carry that out? And then also what processes do you have, right? Collecting the cash, paying out the checks, reconciling your accounts. All of those seem, for an accountant, they seem pretty fundamental, right? But there's nothing like when you walk out the door and you realize you're left and you have no idea how it was done. So getting those things documented is what is critical. Now, right, who has time? That is always going to be the fundamental question we get 
is who has time to document all that. But the only thing we can encourage is when we see organizations that have this type of turnover, those that have some things in place, are in such a better place, are able to respond quicker, really pivot and, and really kind of come to a better place of hiring that next person in a better fashion than, you know, it, it, and I know, right, this is very similar, right, to conversations you have when you're talking to senior leadership. But I would say the one difference, and you mentioned, this probably a little more sudden in, in the back office, right? We wish we had more time to plan yeah. for a retiring finance director. And sometimes it's not even your finance director. It could be your right hand staff accountant, senior accountant, and they are just as critical as a part of that process that again, if you get it documented and you get it kind of planned out, you can have something to at least like leave behind, right? For, for so their- So how do, you, how do you like around here, when we lose people because careers change or life changes or you yep. know, 99 times out of hundred, it's a really great reason. Um, but we're pretty adept at saying, okay, next person up. Like we've got, but, but you get into like finance, how many people should be in the finances enough to be able to step up? If they, like, you know what I mean? Is it a good idea yep. to have two or three people trained and how do you do that while maintaining confidentiality? What, what are some steps that we could take? Sure. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of that comes down to size and complexity. Sure. Um, you know, in a best case scenario, for most of our mid sized to larger churches and nonprofits, you would see three people, right? They might carry different roles, might not all be full time. But again, with my auditor hat, you got to have good segregation of duties. Sure. And you also have to have a good environment that allows for some cross training, right? And sharing of, of, of duties. Because that's another a big thing that we ask is, could you hire from within, right? So if you have a transition, and especially at larger organizations and churches, right? They usually have a couple different staff accountants or senior accountants that might have been carrying some of that load. Mm -hmm. The thing we ask, and this is always so difficult within churches, is to go, how are you mentoring and coaching those within your finance team that possibly you could be preparing them for that next role. So that when, if the finance director leaves, you at least have a senior accountant that you can go, hey, what have you been doing to prepare for this? And if we look to see, to make sure we create that environment that's fostering that growth, I would say that's probably a little bit easier in the finance department than in maybe you know senior leadership, right? Asking for a new senior pastor Though, right, we look at a lot of those lead pastors at other campuses, are they getting prepped and prepared? Same thing could happen in the finance team. Are mm. they getting prepared to know what kind of things are involved um, so that they could then step into that role and help with that transition? Because another big thing that it comes down to is the cultural fit, right? Absolutely. Especially in faith-based and in churches, right? Is if you, you can go hire another accountant, right? We're... I mean, not a dime a dozen, right? We cost a little more than that, but we are, you know, you can get that technical competency, but that is not what you're looking for, really. I mean, that's not the whole step at a church is looking at that cultural fit. And so promoting within for someone who's been there and been a part of it, that could really be a good opportunity. That's excellent. Excellent. Anything that uh, you would say, like when I talk to pastors who are going through uh, emergency succession plan, which is always an easy place to start because it's like buying life insurance. It's like, oh, this is probably never going to happen. Well, actually, it has happened every time to everyone. With death has been pretty consistent, but they don't have to think about it immediately. It's like, oh, that's a maybe. So in the maybe emergency planning, I say to pastors, identify the things that only you can do and then figure out who's going to do that. So what would the key functions in a back office that pastors might not think of, what would that list look like? Because mo most pastors are like me. They don't have a finance degree. They don't know. They just kind of count on the good old office manager or finance director to run things. What, what's a quick list? You better make sure this is taken care of, like payroll. Like, what are those punch list things? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely, right? I mean, think about it. You think about the ins and the outs. 
right? So how's the money coming in? Make sure you have a way that you're getting to collect those contributions, get those deposits in, get that, you know, in a way that can then get into your system, right? Be it your donor system or your accounting system. So you got to be able to have a way to collect the money, right? And get that in. Then you think about the outs, right? What are my, my programs? So I got to pay my people, right? Payroll is critically important. And then you also have to pay, you know, your vendors, right? Your different disbursement activities that you might be having. If you're carrying out, if you are back in service and, you know, you're having your uh, sound crew and construction, I mean, are you having different things going on within your church? You want to make sure they have a way of getting paid. Um, then you don't want to miss, and this is where, again, that connecting role is what accounting and finance does is that a way to get that financial information, right? You need to be able to, to reconcile a book, give me a finance, a cash flow statement, right? How much, what is, how much money do we have, right? That's a critical question. All senior pastors, when they're sitting in a meeting, they just want to know how are we doing on our cash flow? Like, where are we at with what we're spending and where are we at? So that's a critical one you're going to want to make sure you can keep a handle on. You mentioned the emergency, right? This is where Act 2 kind of helps, right? We sometimes get called when, oh my goodness, our finance director just left. I still have to get payroll out. What are, what are we going to do? And, you know, this is where we offer a solution that can come in and provide not only the technology to get those systems in place, but then also the people that are adept and know how to use that. And then the other piece that makes us special, which is just what makes Vanderblumen, we used to be in churches. We used to work with churches. So we have controllers and accountants that used to process payroll, used to sit in on those team meetings. And so they can step in and provide that cultural fit as well as that competency and that performance and getting it done. So that's a great thing that we love that we get to help fulfill so that for you as senior leadership, you guys keep going out and carrying out the mission. We're the ones that are going to take care of your back office. That's awesome. Thanks so much for the pointers and thanks for your partnership. We really love you guys and uh, you know, love to see you all helping others. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Perfect. Definitely visiting our website at act2.com. And then you can reach out to me. Um, I'm the head of the NFP Vertical, and I am aweb at act2.com. And I love talking to anybody about what's going on at their church organization. That's great. Thanks so much, Allison. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. It's good to see you.